How would you describe the job President Trump is doing behind the scenes and in front of the cameras during these daily briefings that we're seeing? What's been your perspective, Dr. Birx? He's been so attentive to the scientific literature and the details and the data. And I think his, his ability to analyze and integrate data that comes out of his long history in business has really been a real benefit during these discussions about medical issues. Because in the end, data is data, and he understands the importance of the granularity. And I think he's been really excited about finding the level of detail that we've been able to now bring over the last few weeks to really understand who's at the greatest risk for severe illness, who will have mild and less uh, and asymptomatic disease, and really calling on every American to do that social distancing, because some people may not know they're actually infected and be unknowingly spreading the virus. And that all comes from the president seeing the data and then really directing these policies and these guidelines that go out to the American people. The president has suspended funding for the World Health Organization and blamed them for covering up the spread of the virus. But more than a dozen U.S. officials have been embedded at the WHO since this crisis began, since December 31st. There were constant briefings with senior officials. So they were getting the same information in real time from the WHO. So is it fair to blame the WHO for covering up the spread of this virus? You know, I think early on, when you go back to the, and again, I watch epidemics around the world, and the level of transparency and communication that you need, you have to over-communicate. You have to communicate even the small nuances. You know, when you look at the outbreak that's been reported in China, and you look at the outbreak that was able to be contained in South Korea and a series of Asian countries, you didn't see that kind of doubling rate. You didn't see that logarithmic increase that you see all throughout the developed countries of Europe and certainly in the United States. And so when you look at those countries, it wasn't until the beginning of March that we could all fully see how contagious this virus was, how transmittable it was. And I think that level between January, when it, we had evidence of this apparently, and when we really understood its level of transmissibility, it's always the first country that it gets exposed to the pandemic that has a really a higher moral obligation on communicating and transparency because all the other countries around the world are making decisions on that. And that's something we can look into after this is over. I know the European countries are communicating very effectively with each other and with us. And when we get through this as a global community, we can figure out really what has to happen for first alerts and transparency and understanding very early on about how this virus and how incredibly contagious this virus is.